After the Combine Empire invaded planet Earth, they implemented various adjustments to the very foundation of the planet in an effort to acquire resources and to instill fear into those that would still rally against them. One of these methods showed just how brutal the Combine were and displayed the lack of empathy for the species they had conquered, where they experimented on humanity itself in a torturous way. What was this experiment? What changes did the Combine make to those unfortunate enough to be selected for this? And how were these new additions to the Combine's army used? Here, we explore in the lore and story behind the Stalkers. The war between the Combine and the armies of Earth was short but horrific, and on the seventh hour, this multi-dimensional alien empire was approached by a spokesperson for humanity, where he offered their submission in return for their lives. But not every member of humanity agreed to this offer and continued to fight for their species. Over their time exploring various dimensions and universes, the Combine conquered countless species where, upon a successful invasion, they took the valuable resources each planet held, but the worst part was what they did with the sentient life forms that had once occupied them. Each species was different from the last, and with an ever-growing army, they looked at the biology of each species, and after exploration and experimentation, they manipulated and adapted their biology in an attempt to form new units for their armies, each one mentally adapted to follow their rules. And as time went on, Many species were brutalized and twisted into the Combine unit the Resistance encounter today, some of which known being the Hunter, Advisor, Strider and so on. As time passed on a Combine controlled Earth, these aliens once again experimented with this new sentient life form they had and looked at all of the possibilities the human biological structure could be used for the most prominent being members of the Overwatch. These had volunteered to join the human arm of the Combine army in return for additional benefits with little to no biological modifications, but there was another that was not so optional. A modification some would say was a fate worse than death. The Combine, for the most part, held control over the population of planet Earth extremely well, but with every species that endures an invasion, there will always be outliers that continuously fight back with the aim to return life to the way it was. The Combine were of course aware of these outliers, and so, they devised a way to put a stop to these resistance fighters while simultaneously growing their armies and workforce, where they developed the Stalker. The Combine chose the infamous prison of Nova Prospect to set up their production of this new addition. This was likely due to it already being a place that the human population feared, and where they already had a large quantity of prisoners to experiment on, the majority being captured resistance members, and the unfortunate few who were simply in the wrong place at the wrong time. While Nova Prospect was one of the known locations of this barbaric procedure, there may have been other factories across the wasteland. Once selected, the humans were adapted. In this surgical procedure, their hands and lower legs were amputated and replaced with metallic limbs. This adaptation was chosen for two reasons. The first, limited mobility so that the stalkers would stay in one location, and the second, so that these new limbs could interface perfectly with Combine terminals. The most terrifying transformation was found on their faces, where the Combine chose to destroy the face completely and instead installed a faceplate that allowed them to activate and deactivate the stalkers when not in use. 
This also came with mental conditioning to even allow such a feat on the human brain, where it could be turned on and off on command. Behind this faceplate, they were also fitted with high-powered welding lasers, where their eyes had once been, which, upon activation, allowed them to cut through objects with ease thanks to pinholes in their faceplates. Designed to be drone workers to exist in solitary as they performed combine control tasks across the wasteland, their bodies were drastically transformed to aid this. In their new form of existence, they no longer required a way to communicate with anything around them, so their ability to speak was taken away where it is believed either their vocal cords or their larynx was removed, leaving them only the ability to grunt. In their new roles, they were required to work unsupervised for long periods of time, and in order to reduce maintenance, the Combine took out their digestive tracts that relied on regular food, and instead, installed a gastric port where they were fed with a combine-designed cocktail of essential nutrients to keep them alive and operating. In doing this, their bodies withered away into a basic, vulnerable frame with just enough muscle and body fat to keep them together. And without the requirement for reproduction, these poor souls also had their reproductive systems removed entirely. To complete this brutal mutilation of the human body, the Stalkers went through mental conditioning to serve the Combine and their orders, which eventually transformed them from barely human into biological husks working as a part of a larger workforce. Following their transformation, the Combine transported their Stalkers in pods to various locations across the wasteland through the use of razor trains, where they were set to work for the remainder of their days. The only known location so far was the Citadel in City 17. Here, they were stationed mostly in the lower levels to work with and maintain the core, monitored from afar by Overwatch units and they were even noted to guard the core against any intruders that managed to slip into the citadel. Their lasers had the ability to cut through metal, and if a resistance member were to be struck by them, they would not survive this encounter. In these moments, cementing the fact that the Stalkers now lived only as mindless slaves to serve the Combine, completely unaware of what they once were. There may have been many other locations and uses for the Stalkers across the planet, but if these did exist, the Combine kept them secret. Approximately 20 years after the Combine's invasion of planet Earth, two Resistance members found themselves in Nova Prospect, but they had not been captured. They had come here by choice with a plan to rescue one of the leaders of the Resistance. As Gordon Freeman and Alex Vance navigated the prison, they eventually discovered Dr. Eli Vance, but were unsuccessful in their rescue attempt. And to escape the prison, they used an unstable teleporter, which then exploded, taking out part of the facility with it. Although it is unknown whether this explosion took out the part of the facility where the Stalkers were made, it did remove the fear that the Resistance once had about the prison, which began the uprising. If Stalkers could no longer be made, and a major Combine stronghold could be destroyed, then the Combine were not as strong as humanity believed them to be. Over the next week, The Resistance took back their city, block by block, until eventually, Gordon Freeman arrived in the Citadel. Within the lower levels, the Stalkers worked away fulfilling their orders given to them by their masters, and even when an explosion left the Citadel unstable, they continued to work, completely unaware of their surroundings, focused solely on keeping the Citadel running. The explosion had been the destruction of a dark fusion reactor on top of the giant structure, 
which in turn had cut off the Combine's connection to their overworld. So, in a desperate attempt to reclaim their hold over Earth, they essentially set the Citadel to self-destruct to use the energy from this explosion to send off a data packet in the hope to get reinforcements. But to keep the Citadel running until they could manage this, the Stalkers continued to work, unaware of what was happening around them. Although their transformation had been a harrowing experience on the person they had once been, the Combine had no regard for human life, and these were merely replaceable parts of a biological machine. Over this tumultuous time, the Citadel did fall, where all of the Stalkers inside were destroyed with it. In a way, this wave of power released these poor humans from a tortured existence, even if they were not aware of it. It is likely that the creation of Stalkers may have been the worst fate that a human could go through in a Combine-controlled universe. But the universe is a big place, and there may be many other horrors out there. Without an active Nova prospect to create new Stalkers, and with the Resistance fighting to reclaim their planet, it appears that the Stalker population in existence may very well be the last. These people had once been champions for change, reduced to mere cogs in a giant combine machine through a barbaric and evil procedure. And as for the remaining Stalkers in existence, there is hope that the Resistance will come across them and finally allow them peace from an awful existence. Now, I absolutely love the lore and story behind the Stalkers in Half-Life because this is one of the darker parts of the world that just show how evil and merciless the Combine are when interacting with humanity but they were actually intended to have a different function in the story. According to Ted Backman, one of the developers on Half-Life 2, he stated that the Stalkers originated from the idea that they wanted to create something that crept around in the shadows and lunged at the player. This then turned into something more horrific that the Stalkers were actually victims to. This is genius, as it does put the player in a moral dilemma, really. As Ted puts it, it is a more horrific situation than coming across something that just wants to eat your brains. It's a smart move, and absolutely added more to the lore in the world. Moving on, Mark Laidlaw then said that after they came up with the Stalkers having this tragic backstory, they then did their best to make them as creepy as possible by having them crouch down and follow the players around from behind until they turned around, which eventually acted as a jump scare. There were other ideas where the player would use the stalkers to solve puzzles by manipulating their lasers to cut through objects like metal sheets and beams, but in Mark Laidlaw's words, this came across as scripted and stagey, and although it sounded great in concept, it just wasn't fun. So, they decided to revert to what we have now, where the Stalkers are essentially objects in the Combine's army. My take from this is that I would have absolutely loved the whole stalking the player feature. I like horror games, and I feel like it could have added a bit more to the game, where the Stalkers were mentally conditioned for different parts in the army. Maybe some were used to operate machinery, and others were used to hunt down resistance members. That's my thought on this anyway. The concept art I have been showing throughout this section really captures the tragic nature of these creatures. If I can call them that, they're barely human after the Combine's awful transformation of them, and I truly believe this is one of the worst things that could happen to someone. This is a much shorter episode than usual, and this is for two main reasons. The first, that last week's video took a lot of time to put together, and honestly, it was incredibly draining. <laughs> and the second, that it's Halloween season, the best holiday of the year, and I wanted to pick a nice and easy scary story in the wasteland of Half-Life, so this felt right. I couldn't help but feel sorry for the Stalkers, as you do have a bit of a dilemma when you come across them. Leave or kill them. 
They once fought for freedom and in return, they were mentally and physically conditioned to work for the Combine without their own thoughts or humanity really. This is just one of the many tragic tales that happens in the Half-Life series and one of the things that makes this series one of the best. This was the lore and story behind the Stalkers in Half-Life. If you enjoyed this episode, I would really appreciate it if you could leave a like and a comment on your thoughts. It helps boost the video in the algorithm. If you would like to stay up to date with everything I do outside of YouTube and fancy some behind the scenes content, then follow my Twitter and Instagram. Finally, I would like to thank my gold tier patrons and channel members. Jonas, Lewis, Queen Arby, Fluffy the Dragon, Chicken Guy 791, Ruben Mendoza, Mosfalit, and this week, we're welcoming Monta Tusker, who just became a gold tier patron. If you want to help support the channel, then there is a link in the description. What did you think of this lore? Did you kill all of the stalkers you came across, or did you leave them to their work? And finally, what would you like to see next? Let me know in the comments below. Now, fight the good fight, and I'll see you next week. Bye.